All right, I'd like to go a little bit more in depth in the Mythbusters episode we're watching uh, today. So we're gonna watch Bubble Boy one more time and I, maybe I'll explain things a little bit more if you needed it. Um, so on your document, I'm just gonna keep track. Just lets me know uh, which one you're writing about. First question, what did they know before they began investigating? So let's so look for that. the fact that we've got this bubble stuff all over the place, can I assume that somebody's done something really stupid with it? You are absolutely correct. What we've got is a viral video where a guy wraps himself up in a bunch of this bubble packaging, hurls himself off a three-story building, and at the end of his fall appears to be totally unharmed. Well, it is designed to cushion things. Yes, it is. Bubble pack was created to cushion cargo. Take a wild gas, but can a now watch this video and see if anything stands out as strange to you. In other words, can this three-story? If you watch that, look how look how weird he falls. Take a wild gas, but can a few inches of the pimply padding break a thirty-five foot fall? He jumps off, and for a while, he's gonna fall like perfectly flat, like there, like. He doesn't really move at all, um, and when he hits the ground, of the pimply padding break a notice he doesn't bounce fall. at all. In other words, so um, in real life, that's probably not that how that's going to go down. And they do actually talk about that in this episode. If we were watching the full episode, um, and if you have uh, one of those like streaming services, Amazon Prime or Hulu, I think it is on there, so you can go watch the full episode if you want. But um, and they talk about how they, they can tell right away that it's fake. And it looks fake, too. I mean, he doesn't bounce at all. Even if you threw something super heavy, it's going to hit the ground and bounce. Um, so they know that it's fake. And one of the key things about, like, faking videos is usually right when it happens, right when he hits the ground, there's kind of a cut. And maybe they, they purposely film... They purposely film it looking very blurry and grainy, so it's hard to tell if it's fake. Like, you can really easily mix together two different um, sets of film and and get your fake video. But he doesn't bounce at all, which is, which is the strange thing. So that's uh, kind of what gave it away to them. And it also kind of looks like he changes there. Like, he goes really skinny to really kind of thicker. So maybe they threw a dummy off the building. Who knows? Who knows how they faked it? But they can tell that it's fake. So they really don't want to go ahead and try this for themselves because they could seriously injure themselves. All right, let's go ahead and look at number three. What are some safety things? And this could happen throughout the video too. In other words, can this three-story story really be real? <laughs> yeah, we did it, Bob. All right, Buster falling from 35 feet in bubble packaging. Three, come on, Buster. Two, one, go. Oh. That was a satisfying thud. I don't think it was a survivable thud, but it was satisfying. While four inches of bubbles did reduce Buster's G-load, he's still three and a half times over the lethal limit. So Buster's dead falling naked and dead falling wrapped in bubble pack. Where does that leave us? Well, I can't help but think that with enough of this stuff, sooner or later you'd be safe. I totally agree. Let's head back to the shop and see how much it would take for him to survive this fall. More bubble trouble. So while they're doing this, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kind of jump around a little bit on my sheet. So what are they doing to investigate? First, they tested with the dummy. Uh, Buster. So they drop him. They don't just jump off the building um, because they don't know if it's safe or not. So that's also another safety thing. Um, they test the dummy first. Because if it if it did kill the person, and they just jump off a building like that's, well, you can't just do that. That's not safe. Um, also, uh, we'll we'll see other stuff in there as well. So I'll leave a bullet there. Um, while we're doing this, what are they doing to investigate? I want to I want to list some of the things in their experiment just to just to show that you're you're following their procedure. So they test on a dummy first. Now they're going to go and go to the shop and they're going to test small scale. So. testing in the shop um, and they're going to see what the results are there so where they can control things a little bit better um, so let's take a look at what that looks like i like it so, this stuff. so first up the guys are going to see which style of bubble pack mini medium or heavy duty has the best cushion credentials 
All right, so right there you got, that is one thing that you could write for the independent variable because we're looking for that as well. Um, let me go back. Mini, medium, or heavy duty. So remember, independent variable is what they're gonna change and, and test in their experiment. In this case, they, they might be testing the type of bubble wrap they're using. So the small bubbles, the big bubbles, or the medium bubbles. So you could say type of bubble wrap here. Let's keep watching. As the best cushion credentials. To find out, the guys attach impact accelerometers before raising the human analog to a benchmark six feet high. Here at 16 inches, these three measurements are effectively the same. All right, a couple things you can notice here. Um, they, first of all, they're doing the experiment multiple times, so they're going to double check their work um, and see if their results are, are kind of lining up every test they do. Um, and they're also, if you notice, they get, uh, I think it was four, eight, and 16 inches. Uh, that is the different thickness of the bubble wrap too. So they're adding more layers. So they could also, they're also doing the experiment where they're changing the thickness of the wrap or how much, I guess I'll put amount of wrap. So that's another thing that they're testing. Now, usually we don't want to have more than one independent variable. Like we want to have as minimal things as possible if we're going to change stuff in an experiment. We only really want to change one thing because that then if like your results will only be impacted by that one thing. So in a way, they're kind of doing two separate experiments here. One, they're looking at the type of bubble wrap and the other one, they're looking at the thickness of the bubble wrap. Same. That means that the more bubble wrap we wrap around Buster and ourselves, the less important the type of bubble wrap. I would not have called that. The work in our testing have paid off, and it now seems like it is time for me to wrap myself in bubble packaging and get thrown off a building. I I'm not going to the full 35 feet just yet. No, no. the first drop I'm going to do is to replicate Buster's 15-foot fall. <laughs> Am I scared? I have to admit, a little bit scared. Okay, we're going in three, two, one. There's no doubt about it. The padded pod plummeted. But how's the cargo? Oh. That silence rings alarm bells. The team rushes in, and Jamie is the first to the scene when. Oh, I'm okay. I'm okay. While it came close to crushing him, their bubble barrel did protect the plummet, peaking at just nine Gs. But remember, in the clip, Bubble Boy jumped from 35 feet. Right, I'm gonna pause it there because uh, here we can see some other stuff we're gonna write down, some other safety stuff we got. Um, if you notice, uh, Adam is wearing like a helmet, and I think he's got a neck brace on. Right? So they, don't, they still don't know how it's going to impact a human, and he could seriously like hurt his head or hurt his neck when he's falling. He could hit that board behind him. So they make sure that he's safe there. Um, for my investigating, what are we doing to investigate? Then they drop Adam. And I'll say from a low height. Um, let's go up and look at the dependent variable because they show it right here I'm okay. on the screen right there. So these numbers they're talking about, 15 feet, um, fall, bubble mattress, 9 Gs. The Gs is, is equating to like the force of the impact and that's how they're measuring this. Remember dependent variable is what you have to look at uh, or, or measure to get your results. So they're looking at the force of the impact And essentially that means, um, they, they talk about this in the full clip, but uh, there's a certain level they have to be underneath for the Gs to be considered safe. So this kind of means like dead or alive in a way. Like if it's, if it's under, let's say 15 Gs, then the person would survive. If it's over that, then they might be seriously injured or die. Okay, so that's kind of what they're saying here with these Gs. This force of impact tells them if you would survive or not. Now also, like they could do this test. It's not really, uh, not really the proper way to do it, but they could just have someone jump off in bubble wrap and seeing if they survive or not. That is a way to test it, but it's definitely not very ethical. You wouldn't really want to put someone at risk like that, but it could be done.
Uh, let's keep watching. Their bubble barrel did protect the plummet, peaking at just nine Gs. But remember, in the clip, Bubble Boy jumped from 35 feet. All right, here we go. Oscar from the pool, 35 feet in. Three, two, one. I'm gonna go ahead and just write for my experiment. They drop Buster or the dummy from All right, full height. Torso. Okay, peaked right around 29 Gs. Ow. Yeah. The head, it's quite a bit higher. You can see it's about 48 Gs. 48 So with that, that like, hurt. it's glad that Adam wore a helmet when he it dropped because his head would have been seriously injured. But you'd be tugging funny for the rest of your life. Yeah, that's quite a hit. I am so glad that I did not try this one. Yep, although Adam and Jamie's mattress mechanism offered way more protection than the Bubble Boy burrito. On this screen, you can clearly see what the IV and DV are. Remember, independent variable, dependent variable. So I, I, I talk about this sentence too, how does blank affect blank? And those two blanks are the IV and DV. In this case, we can see what they're changing. So they're saying, how does the amount of bubble wrap, so you can see how thick it is there, how does the amount of bubble wrap affect the force of impact? So the force of impact is measured there. So we can see as they added more bubble wrap, the force of impact went down. This three-story story is nothing but busted. All right, and I do want to go back uh, to control variable. So way in the beginning, when they first dropped Buster. <laughs> that was a satisfying thud. I don't think it was a survival. The first time they satisfying. show it, they're only showing him wrapped in bubble wrap. But this one right here is going to be our control. Because our control we want to use to compare our results to. It's our normal conditions. So if someone were to jump off a building in bubble wrap, we want to be able to compare that to what's it like for someone to jump off a building without bubble wrap. So we know if the bubble wrap has any effect. So in this case, when they dropped Buster uh, without, without any wrap, so they, they call him uh, naked, the naked dummy, right? That's what's seen, what it's uh, like to drop off a building without any bubble wrap. So they see the force of the impact there is 300 Gs, right? So they can use that then to compare. And you can see right here, right away we can see that the bubble wrap is having some effect, right? It went down, but it's nowhere near what they need it to be to, to be considered safe, okay? So that's our control variable, and we can use that to compare all the rest of the results too. Uh, finally, the last question on here, uh, I asked you, do you think uh, they did a fair test? Based on what you saw, should you believe them? Um, so basically, did they, did they repeat their experiment? Yes, they did. Uh, remember I said on their chart on the wall, they had multiple tests here. They did it a bunch of times. Um, they, they controlled their variables. So they didn't have a bunch of things changing at one time. Yes, they had two separate independent variables, but they're really con only considering like type of bubble wrap and they're only comparing that against uh, just type. They're not changing the thickness for that. Right? So they're really doing each experiment separately. So yes, they, are, they do only have one uh, IV for, per experiment, so everything else is pretty much constant, so that's good. They repeated their tests, like I said. Um, everything seems good, so yes, I would say that is a fair test. And this is really subjective. Should you believe them? Would you believe them? Um, personally, I say yes. Uh, their test seemed good. And if, if you want more full story, go watch the actual clip, the full clip. Maybe you can even find it on YouTube. Uh, because they're, they're very thorough in the way they test. So yes, I'll let you answer that one however you need to answer it. Um, but there's my answers.